Hey everybody, it's Adam, live and in person for you. Hey everybody, it's Adam, wonder who he'll interview. He'll get the dirt and the scoop and the story, for he happens to be in the know. Just ask anybody who's Adam, Adam, Lynch for the business of show. Call me Adam.com. Welcome back. Now we are here with the cast of Boys Who Tricked Me, uh, which is going to be at Musical Theater Factory from February 5th through the 14th. Joining me to my left is Jermaine Brown Jr. Hi, Jermaine. Hey. And behind me is Remy Geminario. You did it. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and directly behind me also is CJ Polakowski. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Great. We're great. What made you want to be part of Boys Who Tricked Me? And we'll start with Jimmy. Because I knew it would be a show that I could relate to, especially since I just moved to New York and I've done like the dating scene thing. I was like, mm, I need to audition for this. <laughs> I have some things to say. So. I think I just did it for you know the people involved and the sense of community that Musical Theater Factory instills. I, I did the, the workshop of this this past summer and we literally only rehearsed for two days, but I left like feeling like a better artist. Like I felt fulfilled. I just had such a good time for those 48 hours that we worked on it. Um, so I was so pleased to get to work on it again. I think the material is great. The people are great. Um, and I think that this piece has something to say. The callback process was one of the most uh, original and unique experiences that I've had um, in my musical theater like auditioning life. Um, it was basically like two hours of complete improv and improv games and telling uh, crisis stories and uh, divulging secrets to this group of like 10 to 12 guys that you've never met before. Um, and so just walking away from that, you could tell that it would be an enriching experience. Um, that was different from anything that I've seen thus What do you guys far. identify most with about the characters you play? There's a song that I sing that when I first heard it and that I was singing it, it's called Safer This Way, and I read it and I listened um, to the demo. And, you know, you basically date the wrong guys because you're afraid of like committing to the right one. Uh, I connect to that on so many levels. Like the finale and is my song, My Concern. And I was actually working on it with Ben the other day, and we were talking about how you have like this abandoned empty feeling once someone tells you, I was just using you, or um, yeah, it wasn't what I thought, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. And I felt that several times, and to be able to portray that within a song mm -hmm. for people, it feels really, really great. My and first song that I sing is, uh, is about what do you do with all the good memories when you're done with a relationship? Um, and I think that's such a universal, uh, problem that we all face after you end a relationship that you've been in for, especially if it's for years and like you look around your apartment and there's pictures up on the wall um, and you still have some of their clothes. And so it's what do you do? Do you decide to let that go? Um, or do you hold on to like what good still exists? Since the show is about uh, love gone wrong, lust gone good, and um, the fear that you might die alone, do you each have a story about one of those? fear of commitment just in general like it's like very hard for me to like get in a serious relationship with someone um and so when I actually do have feelings for someone it's like over the moon so I was absolutely in love with this boy um who I met a couple years back doing a show and I was just nuts for him and uh for a while, he was nuts about me too. Um, and things were actually going well. And I'm like, wow, maybe I've gotten over my fear of commitment. Um, and then he was like, mm, I don't know if I can give you what you want. And then he ended it. And so that was pretty devastating, um, especially when I very rarely have like feelings for people. Uh, when I was a freshman in college, my ex-boyfriend, um, he wouldn't let me top him because he thought I was and a bottom. At the end of the session, he looked at me and said, you're a really good top. And I looked at my boyfriend and I said, I know. There are weekends in New York when I'm getting one dollar slice by myself and I just wonder is this as good as it gets? Um, and then my last question is what do you guys love about working together and what have you learned from each other? I just think we have all three have such very different things to offer vocally, um, physically, acting wise. Um, I think it makes for a really cool like palette to show people you know this little slice of the gay community and gay life and I think that's really important to have that diversity there for sure. So everybody watching, make sure you come see this fantastic show here at MTF, Boys Who Tricked Me, February 5th through the 14th. Make sure you wear your pajamas, 
when you come to the show, grab a drink, buy a drink here, and bring it to your seat, and it's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be the most amazing summer party you've ever been to. So you can get tickets. I'll have a link up at Call Me Adam. Musical Theatre Factory has a link for tickets, mtf.nyc. And come see these boys, because it's going to be a lot of fun. Sometimes boys will say they love you. They lie. They probably will see. Watching. For more Call Me Adam, visit callmeadam.com or follow me on Twitter at callmeadamnyc or facebook.com slash callmeadamnyc.